All right, thanks for watching. And some of you may wonder, well, what is the half derivative of the function one? And be warned, it is not the function zero. At least with the definition that I'll give you here, which is the alpha derivative of f is one over gamma of, I think, one minus alpha of. You now differentiate some integral, d over dx, integral from zero to x, f of t, and then x minus t to the alpha, dt. So here's what you do, you take a function again, and you take some sort of average that makes it blow up at x, and then you take the integral, right? You take the average, and then you differentiate that. So this horrible average, you make it even worse, and you multiply it by some constant. And so in particular, if you let alpha to be one half, then, that constant becomes one over gamma of one half, which I've calculated in my first half derivative video to be one over square root of pi. And you still have d over dx, integral from zero to x of, in this case, we get square root of x minus t dt. So that's in general, but the question is, what is the function here? The function is just one, because we want to find a half derivative of one. And the nice thing is, this is actually easy to integrate. So let's do that. So one over square root of pi, d over dx. And now an antiderivative of this becomes two square root of x minus t, except when you differentiate this, you have this extra minus sign. So we have to do minus, and you take that from t equals to zero to t equals to x. All right, the nice thing is, if you plug in t equals to x here, you get x minus x, which gives you zero. And so what you're really left with is one over pi d over dx. So minus minus two, which is two, and then square root of x minus zero, it's square root of x. And if you differentiate that, this becomes one over two square root of x times two, which becomes one over square root of pi, one over square root of x. Or if you like, one over square root of pi x. Now, this is very, very surprising, because you may ask, well, why isn't the half derivative of one zero? Well, it is and it isn't. And this is very common in math. Sometimes you have two different definitions for things. And basically, there's sort of two teams here. One is like Team Edward, Team Jacob. If you take the definition that, you know, the half derivative of the half derivative gives you the derivative d1, which is zero, then the half derivative of one is not one over square root of pi x. Because if you do that, you get something one over constant over x. And so using this definition, the half derivative of one should be zero. Okay, so in other words, if you want to take this definition, the half derivative of one is zero. Or other people will say, well, I really, really like this formula. And so if you define the fractional derivative of a function to be this, then with this definition, the half derivative of one is one over square root of pi x. And by the way, this definition sort of makes sense because this becomes one over square root of pi x to the minus one half, which makes sense in terms of the power rule. Because if you differentiate, for example, x squared, then you get two x, two x, which is the same as two x minus one. So philosophically speaking, the derivative 
takes one out of the exponent, well, the half derivative should take half of the exponent away. And in fact, um, let me erase this a little bit. And in fact, this sort of makes sense here because, well, what is one? One is x to the zero. So if you take the half derivative of x to the zero, you should get some constant of x to the zero minus one half, which is some constant x to the minus one half, which makes sense in this case. And it's really up to you to figure out which definition you like more. Both are very useful, and you know I don't want I don't mean to start a war by this. Depends what you like. But I have to say that formula that I erased is very, very useful. For example, it helps you to calculate the half derivative of ln of x, which wouldn't have been possible before, just using the definition. All right, so if you like this little comment video, if you'd like, and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.